So let's first look at uh, uh, the creation of drawings and 3D models uh, from 3D laser scanning data. So there are quite a number of applications you can use 3D laser scanning for. One would be for adaptive reuse, that is taking an existing building and uh, doing some redesign of that building or incorporating in a new structure. You can also use 3D laser scanning as you do the construction or new construction of an existing building or even new construction of a building. Uh, th that's the case for the building I'm actually sitting in today. So you see a couple of examples on the screen there for you. Also, it's imperative when you don't have uh, existing drawings or existing models of a structure uh, that you're going to uh, redesign. It's important to be able to collect uh, very accurate information and 3D laser scanning gives you very high amount of detail, high definition of every piece of the structure that you can then detail into drawings or 3D models. Very unique in that regard. Uh, if you had to capture that uh, in the old manual ways, it would take a uh, inordinate amount of time. So 3D laser scanning can capture data a very short period of time and be able to start uh, producing the results that you need. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So basically we take the field measurement. Here you see the Trimble TX5 scanner on a job site. So how do we go about taking this, uh, this data that we collect with this high fidelity instrument and produce a, a result out of it? So what we're going to first look at is how we create a 3D drawing. So in the top left-hand corner there, you see uh, a colored 3D point cloud, and we're going to try to produce a 2D drawing out of it. So we're looking at taking 3D point cloud and producing a 3D drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that in uh, the, the software live. So I'm now going to switch to Trimble Realworks, which is our 3D point cloud management software to produce results. So here we can see a 3D point cloud. This is a section of a building where they've done some 3D laser scanning and we're turning the point cloud around so you can see uh, the overview of the, of the point cloud. But we can also go inside and have a look at um, the detail that was collected. So I'm going to get open our Scan Explorer view. And you can see uh, some of the detail that was collected. Inside this building, you see some people in the building. The building is actually in use at the time. And you can see as we navigate uh, through the different views, you can see the level of detail being collected. So you can see uh, light fixtures. You can see the tiling. Uh, you can see the detailed support of any beams or any structures that have uh, been put up there for, for, for use or for uh, decoration. You can also see things like sprinkler heads as well, light fixtures, so lots of details, fire, uh, fire alarms and sensors all about the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, 3D point cloud and we're going to take a slice through that 3D point cloud to be able to produce uh, a 2D drawing from it. So I'm going to use our office survey mode. We have three operating modes within Trimble Reworks. One is registration, when you bring the point cloud in and you have some automated tools to put the different stations together. And if I show you from a top view, you can see in this 3D point cloud, I'll turn the stations on for you, that you have uh, quite a number of stations here uh, that I uh, was able to produce the data that we have here. And so we imported that data and we used our registration tools to automatically stitch that together so that we have this 3D point cloud. So as I said, so now I'm going to take this 3D point cloud, I'm going to create a slice through it and to produce a 2D drawing. So I select the point cloud and I can go to my office survey tools and I'm going to use the cutting plane tool. What this tool does is it allows me to create a slice anywhere in the software to produce uh, a section through the 3D point cloud. So you see defined in step one is you can select the area that you're going to create your slice through. Then I can define the cutting plane. Now because we have a coordinate system for this, we can actually pick uh, an axis from that coordinate system. I'm going to pick the Z axis, which uh, cuts a slice vertically through the point cloud. <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me there. And so you can see that I can actually position that uh, that slice anywhere through the point cloud. I can pick a location, and if I change my rendering here to white cloud, we'll be able to see down in the bottom screen. I can move up here. You can see the th the uh, slice being created. So as I move down through the point cloud, you can see the slice changing depending on where I position that position that slice. So let me just uh, position this in a certain location. Okay, so there's a pretty nice clean slice right there. You can actually pick the exact location by using this pick and picking the exact location in the point cloud. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this bottom screen larger for you so you can see the, uh, the slice of the 3D point cloud. So you can see the points that have come from the 3D point cloud, which is made up of millions of points. You can see areas that might be missing. That's just because we haven't covered that area uh, with our 3D laser scanning. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this uh, 2D slice and uh, produce a 2D drawing from it. So we have a tool here called 2D Easy Line, which will interpret these points and start to draw some line work for me. So when I click on this tool, we uh, go further into the tool. I can ask a Threshold how it will basically look at the 3D point cloud and automatically draw some line work for me. So I set a threshold here. I'm set it to five millimeters. I'm going to use uh, international measurement today because we have people from uh, all around the world attending. And of course, uh, if you couldn't tell from my accent, I'm originally from Australia, so it's easy for me to think in the metric. So I'm going to hit the preview button, and you can see some black lines that are automatically created for us through the 3D point cloud. So right here, I'm going to, uh, you can see right here, and maybe if I change my background, I'm going to edit my preferences here. Maybe if I change to a white background. Oh, that's a gray background. Maybe try to white. Okay, so maybe from here you can see it. So you can see there's a black line created through the uh, the white points there. Again, I might edit the preferences. Maybe I'll change it to a blue background here. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier for everybody to see. So you can see here the 3D point cloud, and you see the automatic line work being created. What we can do is uh, it's making its best, the software is making its best effort to uh, draw the lines through this uh, point cloud. Uh, what we do is we can uh, edit that point cloud to make sure that we make some corrections to it. So you can see the edit the polyline tool, and I can make sure that this line now goes to the corner. You can see now it edits the line work. Likewise, in other locations, we can edit the line work to make sure that we connected the points to the exact location on the point cloud. And what we can also do is, where it's made some mistakes, we can ask it to delete those pieces of polyline. You can see that it's marked in red now and I can delete that section, and if I highlight these two, I can ask it to fill across the gap, and you can see now it joins the 3D uh, the polyline uh, to, from one end to the other end. In areas where I, uh, it's created point cloud based on some points that are not really relevant to the drawing, I can edit those out. and delete those out of there. And also I can take out that piece of point cloud if I want using my segmentation tool. Take them out. You can see the polyline comes back. In an area where I lines have been created that actually uh, straight lines that I need an arc, I can edit those out. So I'm going to select those points along this arc here. And delete those out. I'm going to use my 2D drawing tool. 
I'm going to select the Arc Drawing Tool. I'm going to select the two points. It draws my arc. I can fit, if I click along the line, I can fit the arc as well, but I can also adjust it this way and make sure the arc fits the right radius, like so. Okay, so we can uh, create arcs as well. So I can spend some time uh, editing all my line work and produce the final 2D polyline. And I would apply it and then create. So I'm not going to do it in this case. So I go through the steps of creating. Uh, but I'll show you the one that I created before the presentation today, which is this one here. the top view, and you can see the 2D line work that was created. And then what I can do is I can select that 2D, uh, this polyline, and I can export it out. And in this case, I exported it out as a DWG uh, drawing, and I imported it into, oops, I imported it into Trimble SketchUp to start detailing of dimensions to create my uh, 2D drawing. So first of all, we bring our 3D data into Trimble Reworks. We, uh, we use the registration process. And then we're going to use one of our office survey tools called the cutting plane tool. We generate the section uh, at the location that we desire, that, desire the cross section to be created. Then we use the 2D easy line tool to generate and edit polylines. And we can export that polylines and also the points, if you want, either into CAD or into BIM software for further detailing and management. So here's the result in uh, Trimble SketchUp. And I started taking that drawing and I started giving it dimensions and uh, giving it a lot more detail that now we can print out this drawing and, and take it onto site uh, for use as well. 